time to learn about a 4000 year old profession to help you level up your modern storytelling skills. And yes, I'm talking about the wondrous world of typography, the art of putting letters and words on the page. Here's how to make the words of your story beautiful and functional. Look, I won't claim that I can make you a typographic expert in the next couple of minutes. First, because I'm no expert. Second, because I can't possibly teach you 4000 years worth of skills. But I can still cover quite a bit of low-hanging fruit to help you craft beautiful web stories, so let's do this. If you've been blogging for a while, you might have already tinkered with optimizing your topography in the past. For a 3000 word blog post, it's very important to get the so-called vertical rhythm right. That is a harmonious way to lead your readers through your article and thus establish rules for the size and the distance between headlines, lists, paragraphs and so on. A web story is less like a blog post and more like a combination between a billboard ad and a magazine page. You still need to establish beautiful fonts and hierarchy to guide the eyes of the readers, but the rules are less strict. Less strict doesn't mean no rules though. So before we go into the nitty gritty, some basic rules of thumb when it comes to text on stories. First, avoid walls of text. Try to stay within approximately 200 characters per page, or 280 at most. Second, make sure text is visible. Not too small, not too little color contrast. And third, let your multimedia do the talking. Your image or video should usually say the most important thing. The text should be bonus. With those house rules out of the way, let's cover some of the basic typographic tools available to us first. And then in the second video of this two-part series, see how we can apply them to achieve a beautiful composition. Let's talk about the toolkit available to you. In the 18th century, that would have been your printing press and letter case. But things have gotten a little easier since then. For now, I'll cover two big areas of your thankfully digital toolbox. Style and layout. Style in the world of typography refers to the shape of the letters themselves and the shape of the letters is determined by the font. So the easiest way to change what text looks like is by changing the font family. Picking the right font family is half of the game. Most fonts can be categorized using some broad characteristics, like whether they use serifs, which is a slight projection finishing off a stroke of a letter in a certain typeface, whether the letters are monospaced evenly from each other or not, or whether they're part of a special group, like cursive or brush. The choice of font can make a reader feel different in the moment, even though the words are the same. Consider these two examples. <sighs> so elegant. Looks like I have a frolicking good time on that train, sipping on a cup of tea. How about no? I somehow get the feeling something really, really bad will happen on this ride. You can get an even more pronounced effect by selecting the right font in a font family. Each family has various sub-variants called styles. They're often defined by italic, width and weight. And while you might already be used to making something italic or bold to emphasize it, there are many more ways for you to use these styles. Condensed styles, for instance, work great for headlines, while bold styles can make something feel bold. And thin styles look modern, elegant or timeless. As a general rule of thumb, Try not to use extremes for paragraphs. This paragraph with a thinness of 100 is almost impossible to read, while this paragraph at a weight of 800 is super stressful to read. Part two of your typographic toolkit are the various ways to control the layout of a paragraph or line of text. So these are things that you do when you already have chosen your font family. For now, I'm only talking about layout within a paragraph. We'll get to placement on the story page a little later. The three attributes I want to cover for now are alignment, tracking and leading. Alignment describes the ability to flush the text left or right, center it or even justify the whole block. Aligning the text left or right works great when you anchor or position the text box on the left or right side of the page. While centering, you might have already guessed it, usually only works when you actually place the text box into the center. It's harder to justify justification as I found it only really works with walls of text, ideally in columns, so best to use it sparingly. Tracking is often called letter spacing on the web which is arguably a much better description for what it does. Really, it allows you to make the space between individual letters smaller or bigger. This is an incredibly tempting setting to use, but I urge you to be careful, as this can be the equivalent of asking for ketchup in a Michelin star restaurant. You're effectively saying, nah, the font designer who created this font didn't really know what they were doing. That being said, it can create an interesting effect in particular with uppercase letters, which can allow bigger tracking. The last of the three is called leading, or what we often call line spacing or line height on the web. Increasing this value can allow a paragraph to breathe more, and decreasing it will make it feel tighter or compressed. 
The optimal value here depends on various factors, such as the amount of words, the font size and the viewing distance. But that's not super helpful, isn't it? So here's a general rule of thumb. First, never make it smaller than 1. That will always look cramped. Second, a value between 1.3 and 1.6 is usually a pretty safe bet. Try it out. Third, anything above 1.6 will make individual lines float around and look disconnected from each other. Now it's time for practice. Try out everything in the editor of your choice. Don't worry too much about making things look pretty yet. For now focus on learning the tools of the trade. In part 2 of this two-part video series, we'll go into detail about how to use this toolkit to make aesthetically pleasing web story pages. Subscribe to the channel to be notified when it's available or check in the description to find the link if it is already published by now. Onwards.